everybody, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we are doing a craft project incorporating cr crochet into it. I'm super excited about this project. It is so fast and easy. So I will get into the supplies we need to make this give thanks wreath and then we'll get into making it so fast. So there's a lot of supplies needed. Um, I got all of my supplies at Joann's stores. So I will go through them one by one. Bert, first thing, the big main thing is the wreath. I got this fabulous giant giant 24 inch wreath that's just plain but they have different designed wreaths there um, you want a 24 inch wreath you could go down to an 18 inch wreath and that's totally fine you'll also need these letters this is craft wood letters they come in two packs of the letters and you're going to need 10 letters all the letters to spell out give thanks you're also going to need some black paint unless you want the wooden colored look you can leave them plain but I wanted black letters so I got the paint and a paintbrush we're going to need some jute twine this is a jute twine and this is um, just to wrap through the bunting and wrap around the wreath you could use plain yarn for this as well you're going to need a hot glue gun or you could substitute a tacky glue if you wanted to but I'm going to do hot glue today we're going to need some plain yarn this is an acrylic yarn this is actually a red heart yarn super saver in the color warm brown but you can use any acrylic type of yarn or cotton yarn any color that you want we're going to need a G sized hook which is 4.25 millimeters almost four and a half millimeters and uh, this fancy hook I got from the Etsy shop would be fancy this hand carved ergonomic crochet handle hook is so wonderful to use I use it in all my video tutorials you should definitely get on that uh, link is in the description of this video so you can get one of these fabulous crochet hooks for the holidays it's such a great deal also scissors and a yarn needle will help in this project as well for cutting yarn sewing things together sewing ends and everything so this is what we're going to be making today all the links are in the description of this video for all the supplies and you'll get the link to the craft project on yarnutopia.com as well that's linked in the description of this video please check me out on Facebook Instagram snapchat all the fun social media pages and keep up to date for with yarn utopia make sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and click the bell so you can get the update on when we post our next video I have to say say a huge thank you to my dad behind me over my shoulder he is filming this tutorial he's taking the photos for this tutorial and he does so much for Yarn Utopia so big thank you to him and big thank you to you for watching all of our tutorials as well and thanks for subscribing <laughs> we're growing so fast this community is nearing quarter million it's crazy awesome <laughs> all right let's get started and make this fabulous give thanks wreath all right we're gonna start off by painting first so while um, the paint is drying we can crochet our pieces so I have just a paper bag here you can use a paper plate or something um, just to hold your paint on and I have these letters I got at Joann's Joann fabric stores um, this is just these wooden letters I will put a link in the description of this video for these letters and here's the back side so you can see it's two pieces one and a half inch letters and they're wooden and they're super cute so we're gonna glue them to our pieces to our little bunting later and I have painted already these ones black you can paint it whatever color you want but I am going to show you what I did exactly so there's no questions so I just grabbed one of the letters here and I'm going to use a tweezers you can use a rubber glove um, to kind of hold your piece um, while you're painting and then I grab this paint here this is just black paint apple barrel uh, super cheap again at Joann's and we're just going to pour some out Let's see, pour some not much out and then we have our paint brush and we are just going to paint our piece. Oh, let me hold it fairly quick here. 
I'm not coordinated with my left hand, so this is going to be a little tricky. There we go. So I don't want to get paint on my hands, but if you wanted to use like a, a rubber glove or something, you could totally do that. I'm just channeling my inner Bob Ross here. Just got to <laughs> go around and make it super pretty all the way, front and back. Uh, if you wanted to, you could just do the front, but I'm going to do the front and back just so there's no splotchiness or you can't really see. I don't want to see any of the wood color. Okay, I'm going to turn this around. I don't want to get any paint on me. And I'm left-handed painting now. You could even have the kids join in on this. This will be a fun craft project for the whole fam. Oh, I'm missing a huge giant chunk back there. Okay. So once you have all your letters painted, you want to set them all aside and let them dry. And while they're drying, oh my goodness, <laughs> don't drop it all on the paint. Just wipe any excess off. And that's why I have this paper under here, because if I screw up, I don't want to get my tabletop all dirty and everything. So there we go. Looks good. So once you have your letters all painted we are going to set this aside and let the letters dry and once we have our letters once they're all drying we are going to start crocheting so let's grab our yarn here I'm gonna clean all this up and then I'll get I'm gonna have this warm brown yarn you can use any color for your bunting and once we have all that set up we are going to crochet the bunting next all right so we're gonna make the bunting now we want to make 10 of these triangles we're gonna put them upside down um, kind of like little flags on the jute later the jute rope later so we want to make 10 of these because give thanks all together equals 10 letters so we want to um, make 10 of these so I'll show you how to do that I'll make one on camera and then you can make as many as you need the 10 <laughs> so let's start off with a slip knot put your short end over your long end then fold this down and then pull your long end through and pull tight and there's your slip knot there insert your G hook and we can start so we're gonna start off by chaining two so yarn over pull through one and two and in the second chain from the hook we are going to make a series of stitches we are going to put three half double crochets in there so yarn over go into that second chain which is way over here just like that yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through all three of the loops on your hook. That's a ha excuse me. That's a half double crochet. So we're gonna do three three of those. So yarn over, go back into that chain, then yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. There's two, and another one for three. Okay. Once you have your three half double crochets in there, we're going to chain two. So yarn over and pull through one and two. And we're going to put three more half double crochets in that same spot right in there. So put three more half double crochets in there. So one, two, and three. Perfect. Now we are going to chain two again, so one and two, and we have to do that one more time. So put three double crochets into that same spot. You can see the triangular shape is starting to form, and this is our third side right here. So it's very similar to the granny square style. Now, to finish our last corner, you can see the chain two spaces are our corners, so we have to make the top corner right here. So we are going to chain two, one and two, and then slip stitch to the very first half double crochet stitch right here, okay? This is a chain one down here, 
you can't really see it very well but right here is a chain one we're gonna go into the actual stitch right here so go under both loops then yarn over hook it through and then pull it through the loop on your hook as well and we've attached okay so now we have a cute little triangle we have to do three rounds total so this was for the first round so let's chain one and half double crochet into the very same stitch that we just slip stitched into so yarn over go into that stitch then yarn over and pull through Uh, there we go <laughs> then yarn over and pull through all three loops and then yarn over go into the next stitch we're gonna half double crochet in all the stitches in each of these three stitches here just like that and then in the chain two spaces here we're gonna put two half double crochets so one and two and then chain two one two and then put two more half double crochets in the same chain two space so it's two half double crochets chain two and two half double crochets all in the same chain two space just like that now we're going to half double crochet into each one of these next three stitches and this first stitch right here you might have to scoot these stitches in your chain two space over just a little bit so you can see this stitch and be sure to yarn over first then go into that stitch and make your half double crochet so there's one next stitch right here is two and the next stitch right here is three awesome so now you're at the next corner you have to put two half double crochet chain two and two half double crochet in there half double crochet in these three stitches and end this round with the corner two half double crochets chain two and two half double crochets and I'll meet you up at the end of this round all right just finished up round two here we're gonna slip stitch to the very first half double crochet stitch so not this chain one you can't really see it <laughs> again so half double crochet stitch right here go into that stitch yarn over pull through and pull through the loop on your hook and that was round two so we have one more round to do let's chain up one and half double crochet into the same stitch that we just slip stitched into just like that and then half double crochet into each stitch until the chain two corner space and in the chain two corner spaces just repeat what we did for the last round we put two double or I'm sorry two half double crochets chain two and two half double crochets into these chain two spaces here so and then just half double crochet into each of the stitches so basically just repeat the last round so I'm gonna do that and then once I finish round three we'll fasten this off and go on to the next step all right once you come all the way around we're going to slip stitch to the beginning just like I showed you in the last round just go into the first half double crochet stitch yarn over pull through and through and now we can fasten this off because the letters will fit on here so as you can see I just chained one there I'm gonna grab my scissors and then cut this and then pull that through and pull it tight and then we got to grab our yarn needles my dad made me this super cool container that can hold my yarn needles in it so I love it I'll never lose my needles ever again cool huh so now I'm just gonna grab my yarn needle and yarn my needle with the straggler strand and just sew that in in the back here just underneath some of the stitches and back and forth just like that uh, one tip I can tell you that you could have started these with the magic ring if you wanted to um, that's totally fine I just like to chain two and have it that way and I just sew in this end here so I'm just gonna yarn my needle There we go and sew this in around the base of the stitches around round one and that will 
close that center just like that and then trim that short and there's your triangle also uh, another tip you can do is pin this down to like a towel or a board or something or if you have a blocking station you can pin these down in each corner in the shape that you want it to be and then spray it with water and let that dry so that they will stay in the triangular shape uh, because some of these somewhat um, kind of get wobbly and not so perfect so you can spray it with water and then it will stay in its perfect triangular shape uh, but what you need to do now is make 10 of these for the whole all the letters is give thanks so let me grab all of my um, all of my little flags here just like this so it's gonna be G I V E Let's put those up there Ooh. My phone is like going crazy. Okay. <laughs> and then T H A N K S. Okay. Just like this. Something like that. And then we have to grab our letters that we painted earlier. And we are going to hot glue these to these little flags. So I had a bunch of these already painted, and I just showed you the G on camera here. So G, I, V, oops, I lost, my E is still in this bag here, okay, E, T, H, and KS oh my gosh how cool is that okay so what we want to do is grab the hot glue gun um, be very careful with this it is it can get very hot you could actually if you wanted to just use tacky glue I have tacky glue on the side in case the hot glue is not really I mean it might not work very well or you could get fabric glue or wood glue but see the problem with fabric glue it might not stick to the wood and wood glue might not stick to the fabric so I recommend either tacky glue or hot glue these will definitely work so I'm gonna do hot glue so let me um get this all heated up I gotta plug it in and get that heated up and I'll show you what I'm gonna do next all right so I have been gluing this stuff off camera here uh, the hot glue seems to be working fabulously so I'm just putting it on the back and then just slamming it down onto the little banners and immediately I mean look at that immediately <laughs> It sticks so fabulous this is going so well and I'm actually almost done here so you can just continue watching Do -do -do. okay so once you have them all glued down clean them up a little bit make sure there's no glue strands or like hot glue anywhere gross Okay, so make sure you glue them so that the banners are upside down triangles too, okay? Once you have that done, unplug your, um, I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm trying to unplug my, um, thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to unplug my hot glue gun and, um, put that on the side so I don't burn myself while we're <laughs> while we're filming that would be so embarrassing and horrible okay so now what we have to do let's grab our wreath I'm sorry I'm getting in the camera <laughs> don't, don't look at everything okay so here's our wreath I'm gonna put it back here so you can see the ginormous wreath this wreath is um I got it at Joann's I don't even know anything about it. Here, this is the tag. 
24 inch wreath okay from Joann's I will link it or something similar to uh, in the description of this video so you can get something similar it's a 24 inch wreath that way all of these letters will fit nicely across here it's super plain you could dress it up with some embellishments if you wanted to um, but also I got some of this jute rope right here okay this is a pack of jute twine and um, it says 150 feet, but you're not going to need that much, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. And again, I'll link all this in the description of this video. Let's grab some of this. Let's find the end of this. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to grab this. And we got to grab our yarn needle because it'll be much easier to use our yarn needle. In the, with this jute. Okay. At least I hope so. There we go. Okay, so I yarned my needle with the jute. And we are going to go into, like, okay, the G first, into this corner from the in, outside in to the back of it. Pull that through. And then come out the other side. Okay, just like that and slide it down okay you can set that down oh my goodness sorry grab the next letter i go in and then come back out the back just like that and pull okay grab the v go in then back out and the e grab that go in and then out okay and then what you want to do is slide these down enough so that this much on this side can wrap around the wreath over here around the whole thing okay so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna clean up this area real quick and I'm gonna be able to lay my wreath down I think it'll be easier to do that so I'll be right back all right, so I laid my wreath down and I actually tied this one already. Um, what you wanna do is actually stand your wreath up and I know um, probably I'm gonna get in the camera and um, the microphone's probably gonna get in the camera too. Well, we're gonna stand this up and you want the weight uh, or the, the gravity to kind of pull your piece down and kind of eyeball it where you want it to go. And you don't want too much space in between but you don't want them to be too close or behind each other so you want to line it up also a big good tip is to get the most perfect roundest wreath at the craft store and I know that's gonna be difficult <laughs> it's kind of difficult to find the correct size so just kind of um, eyeball it where you want it to be and so we put the jute through everything and then we're going to wrap this around Okay, wrapping. And if you want to add glue, uh, that might help. And we're just gonna tie this in a knot around our piece, our wreath. Here, so I tied that once. And I'm gonna tie it again. Oh my goodness. The jute is very difficult to work with, I've noticed. But it's super rustic and super cute. Okay. And then I'm just going to tuck this in in the back. And just so that's not hanging out. Cool. Okay. And then you want to do it to the other side as well. So make sure you're letters look good everything's straight lovely okay and then i'm just going to tie this one also okay and then you want to tie the thanks as well same way just around the wreath like this 
and it would be easier if you had like extra hands to help you too. Um, somebody to hold the wreath for you while you like can get all this tied together and that would be good and helpful. So there we go. Just like that. Oh my goodness. There's <laughs> you trying to give me the little hand. <laughs> See, he's trying to give me a hand. <laughs> the little hand. Okay. So that's really silly. Okay, so there we have it. I'm gonna put this back here. Kind of straighten it out. And like I said, you can embellish this um wreath with like flowers, sunflowers, really full types of um things but I just I'm gonna leave it plain I like it like that so there it is the give thanks wreath is complete I might move this down just a little bit so that it kind of is more even but there it is that was so easy and such a fun craft project. Thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this if you do make this or something similar please leave me some messages or comments on my wall on Facebook with photos so I can see your wreaths this holiday. I hope you all have a fabulous Thanksgiving weekend and um, enjoy it with your families. And I'm going to be on the couch um, crocheting all weekend, so I'm super excited about that. <laughs> Probably do some online shopping <laughs> for the holidays. So thanks so much. Make sure to um, like this video, subscribe to our channel, you know, check out the pattern and the craft project on yarnutopia.com. Until next time, happy hooking!